Hello and welcome to Merlin's Brick News, the weekly show on all things brick building where we talk about set updates and announcements from all the major brands, mocks of the week, new Lego ideas entries and general industry news from time to time as well. Information is as always presented by setdb.org, the best source for set information on the internet. Let's get started. We have only a tiny bit of blue bricks this week, um, but a lot of um, interesting stuff from other vendors as well. But let's get started. Um, Bluebricks has made available the Bandwagen, 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 BV, whatever. Uh, it's Swedish actually, and I don't speak that language. But anyhow, Bandwagen, I think Band, um, it's basically like a track vehicle. I think that's what this roughly translates to. And we are not talking about the 206 Husky um, out of the German army, I, aka Bundeswehr. A two and one set, we are talking about the 105. 449 it's a 1230 scale as is typical for the blue bricks army line it has 914 pieces and over here in europe including tax blue bricks is asking for 40 euros that's four and a half cents roughly blue bricks calls this a two in one set the reason is they have like an armor um, transport version and uh, a medical version the transport version to my knowledge um, is uh, is able to transport 17 people, six in the front um, car and 11 in the back. Um, the, the original um, um, device, no, not device, vehicle is manufactured by this, as I said, Swedish company Heglunds, and that is part of BAE Systems. All right, that was that. Um, like I said, I think there was no real announcement. At least I haven't seen one. Um, Blue Bricks just throw this one out right away. It is a Blue Bricks Pro, so it can be expected that we are talking about Zingbao pieces. The same is true for this announcement, actually. Here we do not have availability and prices yet. Um, the modern sale yacht, uh, the 105606 by Blue Bricks, 1,805 pieces. Um, for this yeah, modern yacht, I mean, this is like, um, I guess, a typical yacht, as you can see them like in the Mediterranean over here, or I don't know, um, somewhere on the east or west coast of the US, folks sailing around, I mean, at least, especially over here in Europe in the Mediterranean. Mediterranean uh, Sea, you can see this these a lot, but also over here in, in the German coasts. Um, I guess the original, I guess, will be something like 36 foot or maybe 40 foot um, a sailing yacht. And I think it's pretty well done. It has a carbon mast. I mean, the original for sure has one as well, or an alum, I guess it's an aluminum alloy. But um, actually the, uh, the brick build model here has a carbon center in the mast to give this um, a certain rigid design and stable design. And yeah, I think it's quite beautiful. I mean, obviously it's not a Kobe ship. Um, that means it has to live with typical slope molds, especially in the front. Um, but I think that um, worked out quite well, I would say, considering that, yeah, like I said, not all the Kobe variety of slopes is available or has been available to this designer. I really like the interior. Um, there's a shower in there, a bathroom, a sitting lounge, um, master's cabin. Um, yeah, it's all here. And with that, Bluebricks is already done for this week. I think that's okay. In the last couple of weeks, I had a lot of stuff to cover from them. But now comes one of my highlights uh, this week, the Paris restaurant by Kada, the 66009. That is, to my knowledge, the first modular building they have ever done. Technically, it's, it's slightly different than a modular, uh, but at least it has uh, the rough shape by, shape by means of uh, 32 by uh, 32 studs. And it is a design by Nicolas Cayet, I guess that's how the name is pronounced. I think he is uh, from Switzerland, if I understand his Instagram account correctly. By the way, as always, all the pages that I'm showing you here, uh, for those of you who watch this on YouTube, um, is of course linked down below in the video video description but um, you can also check it out uh, for the for you podcast listeners just just go to the podcast show notes and there is a link 
um, to this page of setdb.org and there I have a link to all the designs from Nicola. To my knowledge, that's the first set that has been licensed by him. He's actually the author of an amazing book that he recently published around, I think it's called like something like Mini Modulars or something. So maybe go ahead, check out his Instagram accounts. There you can find links where to buy them from Amazon and stuff. Um, but I also have a link here to his Flickr account and his Rebrickable account. And there's a direct link to this mock as well. And if you go to the original mock, that's actually his modular um, Parisian cafe. That is slightly different. It's not exactly the same because this one has been like a typical corner modular with around 3000 pieces. While the Kada set is different. It looks different if you look here on the right side. And the reason for that is that they introduced a mechanism that I at least have never seen in a modular. And that is you can basically uh, put, open it up and make this like a 64 by 16 or two buildings, 64 by 16, which obviously gives you a lot more variety where to put this thing. However, the drawback of that is that this is actually the mechanism to open up the building. So to, as far as I can tell, if you look here in the inside, um, I mean, maybe there is, but I'm pretty sure it's not. If you look at some of these plates here, I think this would not be the design if you could open this up from the from the top. So it is an entirely different concept than a regular modular is, but nevertheless, I think it looks quite nice actually. Obviously, and especially in the center, it need to be a lot more, let's say, stern, a lot more rigid. Um, and as a result, you have like a lot more bricks here. Um, but in general, I think it's very well done. All floors are entirely tiled, which I personally am a big fan of. And um, yeah, and as you can also see, even if you can like open these up, like both sides have entire different interiors, like separate rooms even. So yeah, it is clearly designed for this scenario to open it up like this. I think that is an interesting approach uh, to the uh, to the concept of a modular building. It has 3,230 pieces, so that's not a small one. And of course, you get all the qualities that usually come with the Kada set. Kada is asking for $120 US. Um, I guess that's plus shipping. And by we are another of my partners from China is also shipping these for $140 US. But in general, I think we have to wait a bit more. Potentially prices will come down uh, for both of the shops as always. And you should find this in the YouTube description as well or in the podcast show notes. Um, I have a 5% discounts code um, at your disposal. That was already Kada for this week. In general, I'm really excited where Kada is going, um, especially as a, I mean, they have always done amazing Technic sets. They also did great uh, system brick sets uh, in last year especially, but it was like like they were like ramping this up pretty slow. And now like very recently, um, they either announced or they're basically shipping four amazing sets, right? We have British Underground Street View that is actually on my desk as we speak, designed by Tobias. We have the London Taxi, which I'm really looking forward to, uh, designed by Markus Schlegel, also here from Germany. And then you have now from Exa Sandbox, the Japanese tea shop, and now the Paris restaurant by Nicolas Cahier. So in general, I think an amazing set of designs that Kada managed to get um, rights on. And then of course you have the great Kada pieces, plus um, the amazing and high quality packaging that they do. From my personal point of view, the only thing where Kada is not in front right now is uh, the whole uh, area of digital uh, manuals. They do these, but they don't do them very well. They usually they don't have a very good uh, resolution, at least that's what, uh, what I was struggling with in the past. And um, it usually takes a couple of months after the set has been released before the digital manual is available. I hope that Kata will change that. That's my wish for 2023. Um, more high resolution manuals, digital manuals, and a bit earlier Kata. That would be great. Anyhow, let's move on to Kobe. So for Kobe, a quick um, uh, one sentence up front. So Kobe has already released the new catalog. And I do intend to do an extra um, extra podcast on this one. At least that's the plan. I don't know if I have the time, but that's my current plan. So I will go only briefly uh, over actually two of the sets that are in the new catalog, um, which I think are the most interesting ones. Um, and I do have an error in here. Why is that? Anyhow, um, we are talking about um, and 
I have this only in German here, which is also wrong. But anyhow, we are talking about the battleship Bismarck, obviously a second world war ship um, by the German Navy. This one here has 2,933 pieces. We're talking about uh, the 4840 from um, Kobe. I do apologize for the resolution of the picture. Like I said, this is like almost a screenshot from the catalog. I will do a full catalog series, like I said before. Um, but, well, I mean, it, I guess um, it's a sister ship of the Tirpitz. And we have very recently had a Tirpitz. So I think this does not come as a big surprise. Personally, I think it's just going to be a couple of slight variations from the Tirpitz. However, I mean, you can already see here on the tower on the bridge, um, you see already quite significant differences. And of course, the entire color scheme will be different. So um, I definitely intend to build this one. We're looking forward. This will be my first first Bismarck actually um, from a Kobe however I mean they have done many um, so this is I think from Kobe already the third Bismarck plus they have done I think two Tirpitz which is almost the same ship so um, yeah quite of coverage nevertheless always good to have a new one of this classic for all you battleship fans out there especially of course Europeans anyhow let's move on to the Osprey and we are talking about the 5836 and the 5835 so the Osprey obviously is a very well known American multi-mission tilt rotor military aircraft that can do both a vertical takeoff and landing and short takeoff and landing so this thing has been i think uh, been flying so the first flight was around 2000 i think it's um in service for the united states marine force since 2007 i think it is in service to this till this day and my understanding is i'm not the biggest expert it has been designed as a direct consequence out of the failed Operation Eagle Claw um, that was about uh, rescuing of the embassy's embassy staff held captive at the embassy of the United States in Tehran. Um, that was early 1980, I think. And uh, the mission was based on a, a fleet of eight helicopters, I think. Three failed and never managed uh, to, to reach um, the target. And I think there was kind of a decision made that with less than six helicopters on site, they couldn't do the mission, so they had to abort it. So as a consequence, the whole concept of helicopters, I guess, was questioned. And um, that the direct result of that was the Osprey. Many, many years later, almost 25 years later, this is how much time it takes. Um, Kobe's actually doing two sets i've not yet fully understood the second one there's also a white one my guess is this is a bit like uh, the let's say an homage to the first or um, remembrance of the first flight of the osprey um and um and um that is why they did this special model my guess is that is the boeing uh, test flight coloring like I said this is pure speculation at this point I've not fully understood it yet maybe some of you could write in the comments what exactly it is about this set but as I said I have to take a deeper look at the catalog anyhow this version here will have a few more pieces like 46 more pieces it will also release a bit more early so that's almost like um, like limited edition executive edition mechanism so this almost feels like the executive edition of this set and we can expect this one in February at least over here in Europe, I think it takes a bit more time until this thing goes um, across the pond. Uh, and then in March, we can expect the regular version. With that, we will move on to Lego. And here we have the Art Hokusai, the Great Wave. Um, I think this is a set a lot of folks have been speculating about. Rumors have been out there like forever. We are talking about the 31208, 1810 pieces. And it's available since 1st of January, which um, what I do believe is interesting that we have seen no reviews yet. So it seems this one has not been handed out to any of the Lego recognized fan media, which is interesting. Um, and if I look at it, I must say I really like the, um, the the painting itself. I think that is very well done. Actually, very recently, we had a couple of ideas entries around this one. Obviously, those won't have a chance now. Um, and also, Pantasy has done a set. However, the Pantasy is more like a sculpture, and this one here is just a pure picture. It does not go as deep, I would say, um, compared to the Van Gogh, um, the recent one that LEGO did. Nevertheless, it is a beautiful painting, very well done. 
I hope that these here on the top left are prints, which is great. The only thing I'm not so sure about it is all this white space around it. In theory, it is a good idea. However, these are, if I don't miss, if I'm not mistaken, these are six by six tiles and the Lego six by six tiles are awful. <laughs> I have to say, it's one of the most awful pieces that Lego has. A lot of other companies are doing a lot more, a lot better big tiles than Lego does because, I mean, if you have seen one, right, the six by six by Lego, they have an, they have like an, um, an, an awful texturing, um, they almost look like sandpapered and, and they have a, a very heavy, a very ugly angles um, in the center. So long story short, I do hope that maybe Lego has used this set to, let's say, um, up their game on the six by six tile. So which would be a great news. So I'm so looking forward to reviews on this one. It is quite a large piece. Actually, it's 52 by 39 centimeters or 15 and a half by 20 inches. Um, so that's not a small one. And like I said, it looks rather beautiful. I'm just not sure around the white six by sixes here. Let's move on to the Speed Champion Wave that has been announced by Lego. Um, we're talking about four sets coming out first of March. Yes, we are in the March frame already. And let's get started. The first one is the Pagani uh, Utopia. I'm not sure if I pronounce this correctly. This is an Italian supercar. We're talking about the 676915. Uh, Lego is asking for $25 US for 249 pieces. That's 10 cents a piece. That's not a small number. Um, the Pagani Utopia is running actually a Mercedes AMG V12. It has slightly below six liters and 852 horses. So that's truly a supercar. Um, Lego wise, um, the, the interesting question here is, for instance, if you look at this tile here, um, which is, I think, a two by a one by six tile, isn't it? Um, I guess this here is a print because it's on the side. I think Lego has never done stickers here. In general, as always, uh, Speed Champions are kind of um, a sticker festival. Not many prints usually, but I think this one is quite decent and it should look quite well uh, without even the stickers. I like the form, I like the shape, and I think the wheel size, which is sometimes an issue with the Speed Champions, the wheel size matches very well with the rest of the car. So quite amazing. Um, big question, of course, is um, how many prints do we have in here? Really looking at, uh, forward to get a, more, a bit more insights on this one. Um, like I said, around the sticker question. Well done, well done, Lego, in general. And then the next one is the 76916. We're talking about the Porsche 963. Uh, that is actually a sports prototype racing car. Um, and it has been designed to compete in the hypercar and GTP. That's the Grand Touring prototype classes in the FIA World Endurance Championship. And this thing here has, to my knowledge, slightly a V8 twin turbo charged uh, 4.6 liter engine with 671 horses. Uh, Lego has designed this with 280 pieces and they're asking for $25 US. That's slightly below 9 cents a piece quite well. Well done. And yes, it has like a million stickers. And my big fear is that it's going to look awful without them. However, if I look at this correctly, at least the front window seems to have a Porsche sign uh, printed on it, which is amazing. Yeah, the big question is, how boring is this thing going to look without all the stickers? And that is what I'm really not sure about. However, I know that a lot of folks out there who love the sticker or have no problem with the sticker, I think nobody loves stickers, right? But some folks don't have more problems with that than others. So I guess for this, this is something to look out for on this one. How good will it look without? And then let's move on to the Ferrari. Of course, there always needs to be a red one. Uh, in the Speed Champion lineup, and this year it's going to be the Ferrari 182 Competizione uh, 76914. It has 261 uh, pieces, and Lego is again asking for $25 US. This animal has a V12, 6.5 liters, and 830 pieces, uh, horses, because that is the Competizione, and um, because of that, I think it has like 30 additional horsepower. All right, let's take a look at it. I do like the shape. It is a bit boring, of course. I mean, in general, the 8-1, um, what I want to say, 
the 812 is not the most beautiful of Ferraris, if you ask me, but I think overall all the Speed Champion team has done a good job here, decent job, of course, as always, a lot of stickers, but I think I can live with those. I think you can, I think they are not really needed, um, quite frankly. I think this car will look quite nice because it's mostly a red car, right? So what, what are the stickers adding, especially if you look at it on, on the side, not many stickers can be seen here. So I think you should be fine for all of for those of you who are not big sticker fans. And then we have the double pack as always. And uh, this one here is uh, both McLarens actually. We have the Solos GT and the F1 LM. So the Solos is the left one, the white one, and the uh, F1 LM is uh, the orange one. Um, the set has 581 pieces, $35 US. As. Um, let's talk um, briefly about the Solos. The Solos is a limited production truck, track only mid engine supercar. Um, it has a V10 and 829 horsepower, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have the F1 LM, which is actually, I think, kind of a, like an homage to a 1995th car. Um, the LM stands for Le Mans because in 1995, um, McLaren took the overall win in Le Mans. And so I think this car has been created by them to remember that. Um, and I think um, actually it is a very nice looking car. I must say the orange one here. I'm not, I'm not so sure around the white one. I think it looks a bit weird. I think the original is an amazing car. One of the most beautiful supercars I know, but um, I think it has not worked well on the brick design. But the orange one is really amazing. And what I do believe is, again, the big question is here because it is like, um, I guess, a one by four, a two by four plate. And there's the McLaren sign on the side. So could this be a print? This would be amazing. But in general, I like the form. Um, I like the rough edges um, in the back, um, but especially the front, I think is really beautiful. Again, on the Solos GT, um, the uh, the LM1, um, the F1 LM, I'm not so sure. Anyhow, here we go. That was Speed Champion. And then for those for those of you who are supercar fans, also in the Technic area, LEGO is going to help you out. We have the 2022 Ford GT. We are talking about the 42154, 1,466 pieces, and it's going to cost $120 US again, 1st of March. And I think, I must say, very well done, Lego. This thing looks amazing. I mean, the Ford GT is a beautiful car for sure. Um, actually, I think it has, it ha did run out of production, right, in 2022 and has been built, uh, to my knowledge, since 2016. The original version had 656 horses in a twin turbo V6 only. Yes, that has only a V6, um, but actually a pretty fast one and it costs around half a million. So this is a true supercar for GT. I think that's a car of dreams for so many people, I guess, especially in, in the US, but also in, around the world. And Lego has honored this now with this Technica. And as I must say they have done a pretty good job here. A typical problems that at least I see with many Technic sets is the blue pins that Lego keeps using. However, because this thing is in dark blue color, this is not a big issue here. And in fact, I think the entire thing looks, looks very well done, I must say. Um, it is and also the proportions and everything for a Technic set in this size, um, I must say I'm I'm really um, excited and really like the results. And like I said, blueprints, not a big issue. That is usually a problem that Lego has with like Ferraris and stuff because red and um, Lego blue don't work very well together, at least not on a supercar. But this one here is quite nice. So let's move on to the firefighter aircraft. Uh, 42152, 1,134 pieces do not have a price indication yet. And yeah, I mean, it has a couple of functions. I think uh, you can um, put in the landing gear. Uh, of course, you have now a yellow um, airplane, yellow and red with a lot of blue pins. But uh, speaking of such, uh, but it has a couple of interesting functions like can, you know, throw out or let fall. I don't know what, what is the right word in English of all the water that is indicated by these uh, two by two bricks, round bricks in, I guess, light azure or light blue. I'm not 100% sure. And um, like I said, you can put in the landing gear um, 
you can steer even a little bit. So it has a few technic functions, but I guess that is not the most important thing here. And then we have another car, a NASCAR, uh, next gen Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. I have actually no idea. I mean, I think there was once, wasn't there once a, a movie with, with Tom Cruise around NASCAR? I think that's the only touch point ever had with that sport. I'm sorry, I'm European and I'm ignorant. Um, I know it's a big thing over in the US, but anyhow, this one is the 42153. Um, from Lego it has 672 pieces and Lego is asking for $50 US isn't it curious that I mean yeah I, I think um, uh, that's that does not sound um, as expensive as some other sets from from Lego let's put that like this however it is a sports car so which mean uh, I mean it's a race car uh, and that means it has like a million a million stickers um, however it's mostly like commercials on the car and the number and everything so I guess that's going to be accepted or acceptable it has a like hand of God steering the same way as the Ford GT had um, it has I think technical function around the engine I know a lot of people don't don't like this kind of concept. Other companies, technic companies are doing this as well. I mean, basically means you know, like you're looking inside of the engine, right? Which which feels a bit weird. It's not really how an engine looks like from the outside. But anyhow, here you go, uh, NASCAR Camaro. And then we have, um, that is actually not a new set. That's a gift with purchase in the Lego Star running right now. I actually don't know what the conditions are in other countries. In European stores, I think you have to buy for 190 euros um, which of course fits quite nicely with a lot of discounts that lego is throwing out right now on their side plus of course the new the new modular and stuff like that so we are talking about the blacktron cruiser the 4580 lego says from their point of view this thing is worth 30 dollars us but usually they don't never sell them for that price it's a gift with purchase like i said and obviously this is uh, in homage, um, a remembrance of the uh, 19 late, um, come on, uh, late 1980s, early 1990s series of Blacktron. I think there have been two waves, end of the 80s and beginning of the 90s. And my guess is that this one here is like a reinvention of the 6894 from 1987, The Invader. Um, actually, it was made available 1st of April. No, it's not an April's Food joke. Um, but here we go. Now we have basically this set more or less uh, recreated. However, the new one has, I think, almost 100 pieces more than the old one. Let me double check. The old one had, uh, oh, it's more than twice as many pieces. So I guess it's a lot more detailed, like the way Lego is nowadays. But at the end of the day, it's more or less the same spaceship. Let's move on to a couple of very interesting announcements in general, of course. And I will talk about that in a second. There, there are like a million sets of course uh, became available 1st of January and there are also more announcements I just picked out the most interesting ones from my point of view and let's start with the amazing beach camper van the 31138 556 pieces Lego is asking for $50 US and I think it's, I mean, in general, I should mention, um, I don't know if I've mentioned that before, I'm a huge fan of 3-in-1, um, creator 3-in-1 sets. For me, that's the new city. I think LEGO City is lacking in performance in, or has been lacking in performance in recent years. Also got very expensive, not so much value for kids to play around with. And I think the creator 3-in-1s are a lot better, a lot better deal in general and have been in the recent couple of years. That's my personal opinion. And I think this one here says this perfectly because you have this amazing van um, then you can however also build buildings out of them uh, you have like a very tall building uh, a small building like an ice cream shop with a small car so there's a ton of variety in there right you have two buildings you have a car and a bus and um, they all look quite rather beautiful and especially the van I mean it's it's so amazing you have inside the van let me just move on to some other pictures um, you have here the two by two uh, tiles with one stud um, so you can put like you can I think they can stand inside the car there are multiple uh, options to, to sit uh, folks in. I think you can take off the roof. You have like surfboards on the roof. You have doors. I mean, there's so much amazing stuff in here. And like I said, um, a lot to build for kids. Amazing set. And then the other one is the cozy house, the 31139, 808 pieces. So it is a bit bigger. Uh, and uh, Lego is asking for $50 US. 
Um, and here you have again multiple buildings. So it is again a three in one. But what you can also do, you can basically, so you have hinges in these two halves of the building. So you can put these two together and then you have the building in its entirety. And I think they have done this with all three variations three in one. So technically you have six different houses or um, six different designs that you can achieve. There are printed tiles in there, like for this, um, uh, for the for the mail here and so um it's it's just a huge range of variety um you have this a-frame house here you have even it in completely or entirely tiled a shower which is amazing uh different furniture three minifigures so there's just a ton of stuff to explore i mean it's still expensive it's still lego um but like i said I think my case is closed. Three and one is just amazing. And here for you dog lovers, we have the 31137, 475 pieces. Uh, Lego is asking for $30. And this one is again amazing. Like it has three dogs. Um, and I don't know the name of these. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, it's not on the box. I do apologize. I really don't know much. I never owned a dog. But anyhow, um, so you have, it's a three in one with three dogs. So that's curious. So you have the three dogs and then you can build two other dogs or two other dogs again. So you have on the same box, seven different dogs. I mean, come on. <laughs> the dogs themselves, I mean, I think it's, it's clear. I, I mean, I'm, I recognize all of them. So I have no idea how they are called, but I recognize all of them. And that I think says something. Um, so from my point of view, the Lego design team hasn't done an amazing job here. Uh, again, a great set. However, personally for me, I would even prefer this one, the smallest one of the four that I'm uh, talk about here. And that is the exotic parrot, 253 pieces, the 31136. It is $20 US. And quite frankly, for this piece count, what an amazing bird, isn't it? I mean, again, it's a parrot. Nothing nothing special, nothing we haven't seen before. In fact, um, birds like these we have seen before um, also from other brands than Lego, but I think the Lego team has done an amazing job here. I really also like the fish. There's also a frog as the third option. The frog is lacking a bit, um, but the fish I think is also quite nice. Obviously the frog also in this color scheme doesn't make much sense. So I think it's lacking a bit from that point of view, from the three in one point of view, but the, the first model of the parrot is just um, amazing. What a beautiful piece. So let's move to a couple of availabilities. Just want to point out the most important ones. Of course, there's the Jazz Club, the 10312, uh, the new modular building from Lego, $230 for the 2,899 pieces, um, which is slightly more expensive than the boutique hotel after the recent price raise that they did a couple of months ago. However, it has one additional minifigure. So so it, it is at least, there's no race in there. It is more or less the same price as the boutique hotel um, after they changed the price a couple of months ago. And of course, the Lord of the Rings brick heads, um, all of them now available. So we have Gandalf the Grey and the Balrog. We have uh, Frodo and Gollum and we have... Aragon and Arwen. I already seen a first report from somebody from my community um, who has built um, Aragon Arwen. What I actually did not see on this picture here, it's actually quite clear on the picture, but um, at least on his photos, it was um, much more pronounced. And that is that this Nexonite shield here, it is printed in metallic silver. However, the piece itself is light bluish gray. So it's not like the metallic silver pieces here on the side, like the slopes and the, um, I guess that's a one by one tile, right? And, and you can see this on his pictures, quite, it's quite obvious. Um, that is, of course, a bit unfortunate, um, but I think it doesn't make sense, right? Because the, um, I, I mean, what he's wearing in the movie, um, um, what is his name of the actor again? Viggo Mortensen, right? Um, what, what he's wearing in the movie, of course, is only the printed piece, right? So the, the Nexon Night Shield actually should be invisible. So I think they did, a, they did a good job doing it like this, but it's obviously not uh, perfect. And then, of course, the Tuscan Raider as well. Um, also, I think um, a brick, brick hat, a lot of folks are 
um, quite um, excited about. I also do believe it is very well done. Um, and I mean, Tuskens, I guess, are a lot more popular <laughs> since the Book of Boba Fett. Anyhow, of course, this is a single brick hat, so that's $20. I think the other three are $20. Um, it's, sorry, the single brick hat is $10. Uh, the the team brickheads, if you will. Um, small Gollum is only $15 US, and the other are $20. All right, let's move on. Obviously, also available is now the 501st Clone Trooper Battle Pack. Yes, we are now at $20 for a battle pack. That's, that's 2023, folks. Uh, 119 pieces, but I guess the most more, much more important are the four minifigures. And yeah, let's see how this goes. I do hope that we will see a couple of discounts on those because I don't know. I mean, yes, it's the 501st and they are amazing and, and they are well done minifigures. Um, one has even the hip printed, but it's still 20 bucks for four minifigures. So uh, not the biggest fan. Anyhow, let's move on. Then we have Marvel the Hulkbuster. Yes, the second Hulkbuster that Lego has done very recently. This one for the Battle of Wakanda, 76247. So that's the one where... Uh, the basically the Hulk is sitting in the Hulkbuster, <laughs> not busted by the Hulkbuster. Anyhow, that is a smaller play toy version, 385 pieces, minifigure scale, $50 US. And I must say from the proportions, it looks way cooler than the very recent, much more ex expensive large model that I actually did build. I mean, it's a, nice, uh, it's a nice model, but they made a couple of mistakes there. And I think this one here makes a lot more sense if you ask me. Anyhow, let's move on to Zane's Ice Dragon. From my point of view, the highlight of the new wave of uh, Ninjago. Uh, new Elementary has already done a review, which is great, 973 pieces. And uh, Lego is asking for uh, $100 US. And... Um, yeah, I mean, it's an amazing dragon. It has six legs, which is cool. It has one of these Evo Dragon hats, which I really like. It is a Ninjado dragon. I mean, there's not much to add. Um, and I think it's doing a very job well done, Lego, I must say. And then we have the minifigure Seagulls 24, the 71037, and all the minifigures, um, collectors, um, and yeah, I mean, for me personally, there are two big highlights in there. One is, of course, her, the Falcon Re. Um, Falcon Re Knight, Black Knight, Woman, whatever. Um, new bow in a new color. It's a ton bow, a printed um, uh, trousers, printed legs, printed hip, a uh, new printed torso, a new bird. I mean, she is very well done, but my personally favorite is, of course, the orc. I mean, what else can I say? Uh, and this dude is amazing. I actually do intend to acquire a couple of those. But anyhow, curious, please write me in the comments what your highlights are in the minifigure series 24. Also available is the money tree, the 40648. Um, it has see, 336 pieces and it seems already sold out in the US. That's unfortunately in Europe. It was still available. I did the, the podcast in German this morning. Um, and yeah, Really like the design, I must say. Um, not really my cup of tea in, in, in its entirety, but in general, I think it's also a very nice uh, set overall. And then we have an availability. Actually, this is just over here in Europe. Um, let me explain. Have I talked about? Ah, I've talked about this one in November already. Um, so to to briefly repeat, to my knowledge, and please write in the comment if you have a different information, but to my knowledge, Mold King has done the set without having an agreement with the designer, which is Mock Your Bricks. However, what the Blue Bricks store, actually Blue Bricks is not just, they're not just manufacturing their own sets. They are also one of the biggest um, online retailers for um, bricks that we have over here for like Chinese bricks. Uh, and Kobe, uh, I think they don't do Lego. Um, they're one also one of the biggest retailers. And from time to time, they go directly approach uh, directly the designer and get an agreement to sell the set in their shop. I don't know what the money monetary uh, agreements are um, behind the curtains. Doesn't matter. The point is, um, this is legit. Um, Blue Bricks can sell this. To my knowledge, um, nobody else can or should. Anyhow, that Please put in the comments if you have any additional information on this. But this is my current information that I do have. At least Blue Bricks claims on their site, and they usually don't, you know, they never lie around this, that they have an agreement with Mock Your Bricks. With 
which is great. And that also means that um, the only shop I will list here, my only partner is going to be Bluebrick. So I will not list um, the listings from Chinese shops, for instance, um, that sell this one as well. I don't have very good pictures on this one. However, I have ordered the set. I do intend to have it on my desk um, very soon. Really looking forward um, to this one. Mock your bricks. Um, as always in B, like I said before, with Nicola, um, I have all the links in here, um, Rebrickable page, Instagram account, YouTube, etc. I mean, Walk Your Bricks is not a Rebrickable, but Instagram and YouTube. And I think they also have a site. Maybe I should check if I could link this as well. And then my personal highlight of this week, uh, we know also from Bluebricks actually, I do not have listings um, internationally yet, uh, just here from Europe, from the first store that also Yang is returning to Mode King. And for those of you who are big fans of modulars from alternative companies, this is just great news because from my point of view, he's one of the most talented modular building designers out there. And uh, last year in 2022, you worked primarily with Morg. Morg means Zingbao pieces, like for instance, down here below, as you can see right now, uh, for those of you on YouTube, um, the deers, for instance, is a Morg set. And I must say, I mean, I've, I've built them all because I've almost built, I think with one exception, I've built all of his sets. Uh, all his designs and I'm a big fan but oh my god Zing Bao pieces are not my cup of tea but now he's going back to Mord King like he used to be in the old dice like the Eastlet Bar I think for many many people the most or the best um, most beautiful um, modular building ever done uh, the gallery um, but there have also been a lot more um, all of them actually we can go on the site um, let's let's take a look so he did do three modular buildings uh, with Mord King all three of them are beautiful um, my highlight I guess is the bar um, which is a pretty big one and those three have been um, back in the day from um, Mold King then he did a small building that I also built uh, with Kada um, one with Orge that's the only one I never did and then like I said he moved over to Morg and then we had three Morg sets um, the Hair on Year I have built the uh, Modern Villa as well the tea bar is actually somewhere here in my room I will I tend to build it maybe next week and like I said, this has not been easy for those of you who are a bit like touchy when it comes to piece quality, which I personally, I do admit I am. I did not have that much fun building those. Anyhow, uh, now he's going back to Mold King. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're talking about the 10660 for Mold King. I don't have a price, no shop listing yet, but that's the information that I have. Again, put stuff in the comments if... Um, if you know more and maybe already have an indication which shop is going to have those when. Anyhow, let's move, talk about two availabilities, actually only over here in Europe from Zembo, um, two Suzuki's GSX-R 1000R. I have talked about those before in October. There is a one by seven scale version, the larger version. This is this one here, the 705031 from Zembo, 794 pieces. Uh, Blue Bricks over here in Europe is asking for uh, 40 euros, including tax. Um, haven't seen um, this one in any other shop so far. And then there's a smaller one, the 705030. That's a 1 by 14 scale, so much smaller. I think it's not even a Technic sec, right? It's like, like a system set almost. We're talking about uh, 326 pieces and Blue Bricks is asking for 15 euros. And then we have availability also um, both in Europe as well as internationally by Afrobrick, for instance, from Kizile, the Efi Film. <laughs> I'm not a flower guy. Um, uh, I guess that's an orchid, isn't it? Uh, anyhow, 683 pieces. Um, over in the cheapest offer in China is 26 and a half dollars US. I think that includes shipping into Europe, four cents a piece. And yeah, it looks quite beautiful. Actually, a friend of mine is going to build this one. And then one Kizile actually has a lot of plans. But what they also have is a tank, a main battle tank, actually, a German Leopard uh, 2A7 Ice Cavalry. I'm not sure what Ice Cavalry means. Yeah, I don't know. I've never heard that term over here in context of the leopard. Um, but anyhow, we're talking about the 101, 101 from Kizile, 1,329 pieces. I think they call the series Hardcore Manufacturing, which is hilarious, the name. And it's from the designer Sunderjaw. 
I have to figure out who that is. I actually don't know. Anyhow, 50 euros over here in Europe. That's only 3.8 cents a piece. And I must say, Kiesele, I of course don't know how the piece quality is in here, but I have seen some of their recent pieces and they are quite, quite nice. Not yet... Let's say in not like like enlightened Kobe Lego um, Go bricks yet, but they are getting closer. Um, so let's see how this one turns out. Um, and then we have also availability again only in Europe. Um, don't know what is happening here in China. Um, Wange, uh, we have two architecture sets that um, got available. One is the Space Needle, um, obviously very well known uh, landmark in Seattle, uh, 5238 um, from Wange. We are talking about 1,075 pieces. Um, and Blue Bricks over here in Europe is asking for 50 euros. Like I said, I do not have a listing from a Chinese shop yet. This thing is not small. It is 60 centimeters in height and 24 by 24 is the base. So that's that's not a small one. Um, and then, however, I have, they also have the Villa Savoy um, standing, I think it's not in Paris, it's close to Paris, right? Anyhow, uh, we're talking of the 5237, 1,226 pieces. Um, and Bluebrix is asking over here in Europe for 60 euros. Again, that's when I call out European prices, that's always including tax because that's what we do over here. Um, I talked about this one right already quite extensively back in October when I first saw the announcement. What does surprise me is that I don't see these with other shops. Anyhow, that was a set updates for this week. So let's move on to mocks of the week. Actually, I skipped one. I wanted to start with this one first by Fan Pesi. I'm not 1% sure of that is how she wants to have it pronounced. Anyhow, that's what I'm going to go with today. Um, she has done an extension. I think I talked last week about her extension for the gift was purchased, like Santa's horse house. I'm not one percent sure anymore how uh, the Lego set was called. It was a recent winter gift was purchased. So now she took a look uh, at uh, the ten two nine three from Lego, so the Winter Village collection from last year. The set. Um, and she um, has added quite a lot of pieces to basically complete the building. And I must say, it looks amazing. Um, I think she has done a very well done job. I must say the Winter Village collection set from yes, last year, I, for my personal taste, was already a quite nice. It was not like this, um, you know, just six dot deep thing, for instance, that they did this year. It was already almost the entire building. However, I think she completed it in a great way. Um, obviously, uh, you will need at the end of the day 2,300 pieces. So that's like modular ballpark. Anyhow, she's asking for the manual for at least over in Europe um, for 13 euros. I generally recommend, as always, I will link all the um, designs that I talk about um, down below. And I, I really recommend take a look at her site. I mean, she has done, I mean, from my point of view, the Balcony of Juliet design of hers is the most beautiful mo modular building I've ever seen. Um, but also what she has done, like a modern architecture. I mean, look at her Salzmann house of uh, Richard Meyer. Um, I mean, come on. This is, this is just, this is brilliant. Uh, amazing stuff. Anyhow, let's move on to another very cool mark from Lego Mocklock. Uh, I'm not sure if I like the price tag he put on. I think he has a certain tendency to uh, put quite some prices on, on his design, to say the least. Anyhow, this animal has 9,129 pieces and we are talking about a Middle Earth map from his UCS series. He has kind of a Patreon uh, going on. Um, I think you need to be in a certain range. I'm not 100% sure. I think the UCS sets what he calls UCS. You need to be in a higher tier. Um, anyhow, um, of course, he's selling them also on Rebrickable. And this is the Middle Earth map. The, the main issue is, from my point of view, he has not done a very good job on the picturing here. I mean, this is a nice, you know, graphical um, picture that that's all cool but you're just looking from the entire from the top and I think this is not doing the model justice uh, in my point of view because if you look at one of these small pictures here um, uh, here on the here down below you can see right there is it's truly a 3d uh, middle earth map and it looks quite amazing I think if you get closer to it I'm not 100% sure if I look all these let's say pretty plain 
uh, dark tan um, areas, but in general, I think it is a beautiful map. However, like I said, the picture is not doing it justice. It has more than 9,000 pieces. And from my point of view, he's saying they're here, it is a three by two base plates. And then he says it's 48 by 48 studs. I think that is a mistake. I guess it is 48 by 64 studs. So that thing is no. By 96 studs is no. I don't really understand. How can it be? Ah, three by two base plates, each of them having 48 studs, right? Uh, my mistake, my mistake. I got this entirely wrong. So it is more than 130 studs by um, almost 100. So it is it is huge. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's asking for 55 bucks and you need more than 9,000 pieces. So this could be an expensive enterprise. Um, let's move on to the modular zoo by legofan21 actually i think that is like a combination of multiple modules that he has already published before or she no more than sure the thing at the end of the day will have 8363 parts um for 25 euros you can get the manual and yeah you have all these different modules and it's it's looking really really cool you have an aquarium you're like you have the arctic with with the beers and everything and i mean i would have loved to have this thing as a kid however i could not have afforded i think my lego castle had like 800 pieces when i was a kid so this is 8000 so yeah it is a lot but i do believe there are so many cool ideas in here also for your own zoo that it could be interesting just buying a couple of of these modules i think if you go on his mock page you can also buy uh, or take a look at the individual designs and maybe just use them as an um as an inspiration or or something like that um by the way um it, it definitely makes sense to take a look at lego fan 21's um replicable portfolio because there's a lot of cool stuff in there also around harry potter etc etc Love the modular central perk, by the way. Anyhow, let's move on to another big one. Actually, this week I have a lot of big ones. I don't know why, because I think they stand for something. And here we have Wilma 62, 8,389 parts, 15 uh, euros. And we're talking about Imperial landing platform on Ender. Um, at least, I think this is a bit like, I don't know, is that from these, from this computer game, from the single player campaign, Star Wars Battlefront? Not 100% sure, um, I, if I recall this correctly. Anyhow, obviously, I guess in these 8,000 pieces, you don't have all the, let's say, extra equipment. So you have an ATST on there. You have three, I guess, of the recent TIE Fighters from 2022 in there. And I guess the UCS shuttle, not 100% sure. Um, yeah, it's the 10212. I think that is the UCS one, isn't it? Anyhow, three Imperial TIE Fighters ATST, like I said, um, but um, I think uh, this one here is mostly, of course, around the platform. I'm not even sure of like the base plates and how this is done, and maybe even not even the and the trees on the important piece. I guess the important one is the platform itself, and I'm a big fan of that. I think we talked about a similar mock last week, you know. Just do a bit more, go the extra mile, not just buy a couple of Lego sets and put them on a shelf, but actually do a little bit of dioramas around. I think that is a great idea and a great concept. And then we have um, a nice alternative build for the 10305 for the Lions uh, Castle from Evil Medieval, which is a great name, by the way. Um, and this alternate build has 3,000 uses, 3,297 pieces. That's a good count because it is a castle again. However, the goal here is to have a more realistic castle. He calls it the Norman Castle Keep. Uh, 12 bucks for the manual and I think it's a, a design very well done actually a pretty new um, citizen of um, of Rubricable only two mocks both from 2022 the medieval round tower and now the Norman castle keep really looking forward uh, to uh, this designer um, hope to see more and then we have um, a, a, also a great design by in quotes, mock design. Um, we have the Na NASA, 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 I think it's called NASA, isn't it? Uh, the NASA Lander Phoenix, 
um, 2331 pieces asking for seven euros for the manual and I think I mean I'm not an expert but this thing looks legit and realistic and um, I think very well done it's quite a beauty I think it's also a great extension to your collection of, of let's say realistic spacecraft like right your idea Saturn 5 or maybe you have one of the recent uh, rockets, uh, Chinese rockets from the Chinese vendors like Keyplay or NASA um, or Keda or of course all the other different um, sets that LEGO has done recently, right? The uh, the uh, the lander that they have done, what else have they done? I mean, maybe not that the space shuttle I think should fit in quite well. I mean, they all have different scales of course, but yeah, it's a great extension. However, if that is not enough for you, a mock design has you covered. There is a ton of stuff. There is uh, the James Webb telescope. I mean, there's a ton of different satellites and telescope. You have a Soyuz rocket, which I think is a great, I mean, it has three and a half thousand pieces, almost 4,000, so it should work great with uh, with the Saturn V from Lego. <laughs> you have also Captain Future's Comet in, in, in the portfolio, so a lot of amazing stuff. Uh, have fun with that. And with that, we are rounding up mocks of the week for this week. And let's move on to Lego ideas. And here Lego is um, or has been closing up um, the round, the third round 2022, the last one who got in into the round of 36 um, that uh, the Lego Ideas team has now as at their disposal, the Dogs Fun Park. Um, actually, I'm not a dog guy, so but I do think this it is a little bit like this, right? Like they have all these exercises for the dogs and, you know, where the owners of the dogs and the dogs can train how to do this kind of stuff. I think they even have tournaments and stuff, right? Um, um, anyhow, this thing here has a lot of function in it. So I think all the games that the dogs can play, you can actually play with them here on this thing, which I think is great. Um, would I would love it also on Rebrickable, but that designer, Pitts, 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 uh, decided to put this into ideas. Personally, I don't think that it has a chance. I think this is not, uh, this is not something the Lego Ideas team would do, but nice design and a lot of, a lot of function. Um, that is that is good to hear. So, like I said, uh, the Ideas team is wrapping this one up. They have 36 product ideas, as they call them. Um, and there are a couple of amazing pieces that I would love to have from Lego. Like, for instance, the ancient Roman temple. It doesn't even need to be a temple, but another Roman set would be amazing. Uh, the Dracula castle is great. There is, there is quite some interesting stuff in here. The Lost City, they will never do it. But, oh my God, that would be so nice. Also, a Japanese courtyard garden, maybe a bit small, smaller. This one here, for my personal taste, is a bit too large, but a small, like, I mean, this would be, by the way, a great Japanese garden. What a great topic for gift with purchase ideas contest, right? Um, so, yeah, there are a couple of very cool designs in there. Please leave a comment what your favorite is. Would I would love to know. And London Underground, oh, the whole idea of an underground is just amazing. Uh, the Architect's House from Let's Go, also a beauty. Um, community, I guess, has a good chance if we look at LEGO's track record of building these uh, sitcom settings. Um, Never-ending story, I guess that's uh, too not international enough. That's actually a German thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, great designs in there. Uh, really, I'm really curious what LEGO is going to uh, to decide. And of course, my personal highlight, don't think Lego will do this as a set, but Yivo, she's really killing it. That thing is amazing. I hope that she will go on Rebrickable one day, but right now she's focusing on her, it seems, ideas career, uh, which is, is, is doing great, I must say. Anyhow, uh, I hope you like the show. For those of you who watch this on YouTube, please leave a like or comment or even better, subscribe to the channel. For you podcast listeners, please leave a review, uh, review, comment or like on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you listen to the show. Thanks for listening. See you next week.